We also heard the senior Conservative Andrea Leadsom say she would not campaign for anyone under suspicion of cheating the bookmakers. The Labour leader, Keir Starmer, say that if they were his candidates, they'd be out of immediately. And Nigel Farage joked that Mr Sunak intends to withdraw Britain from the Gambling Commission. Here to discuss what has been another difficult day for the Conservatives as this scandal rumbles on is the Postal Services and Business Minister, Kevin Hollyrigg. Uh, Kevin, very good to have you good here. Um, so far as you're aware, will we actually know the results of these investigations before the election? I don't know, but I hope so. Uh, uh, that would obviously be preferable. <coughs> but... Um, as you've heard the Prime Minister say, there's an independent investigation going on that should continue and uh, the very serious allegations and it seems as if these individuals have committed a massive area of judgement which they'll pay heavily for. Um, now you're the, the, the Postal Minister guy um, and in two of these constituencies, Montgomeryshire and Bristol North West, um, people will have had um, their postal votes coming in. Would it be your advice to people not to vote until they know what's happened? Well, my advice to anybody is to take all the information they have at their disposal into account when they make a vote. I think when they decide who to vote for, and and it may well be that some of these individuals may not be Conservatives. If they are found to be guilty of wrongdoing, they'll be kicked out of the party, is what the Prime Minister has said. So, uh, so that would be a choice for them, I think, Andrew. Because if these people, um, well, they, 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 they are on the ballot paper, they are standing, but if they were elected and then they were found to have cheated... Uh, in this way, they would not be Conservatives in the House of Commons. So people would, in fact, be voting for independence. So at the moment, people um, in these two cases, they don't know whether they're voting for a Tory candidate or an independent. Well, that's the risk that we take. Uh, there's no doubt it's about quite it. It's a risk. The prime yes, absolutely. And people should take that into account when they when they decide who to vote for. But I say the presumption of innocence is a very important thing. And I think you would support the, the right to people to be presumed innocent in all circumstances until proven guilty. I think there's other situations where people have been investigated, Angela Rayner being been one, of, of course, where, and it doesn't seem to be, it seems to be mm. one, one rule for one, and another for another with Keir Starmer, he's saying we should suspend these individuals, yet he didn't suspend Angela Rayner, No, I think, actually, did we as a party call for that? I certainly didn't, because I believe in the presumption of innocence, and I don't think the media is calling for suspension either. I think the presumption of innocence is very, very important. What I don't understand here is why it would take any time at all. Surely all Mr Sunak needs to do is call in or even call up these individuals and say, did you bet on the outcome of the election? Did you know from whom about the election? I mean, it, was, it would have been a conversation of less than five minutes in each case and he would know what had happened. Why hasn't he done that? That's probably a question for the Gambling Commission, who are the people doing the independent investigation. Well, he's now doing his own one as well. Well, so. uh, maybe that will conclude more quickly. But the Gambling Commission is an independent body. It's there to do its job. I, I would urge you to do this as quickly as possible. I think we'd all prefer clarity on what's exactly happened here and those people held to account if they're mm. guilty of wrongdoing. It's not just, of course, the candidates. It's also two very senior people inside Conservative Central Office. Now, I've been talking to some of your colleagues and they all make the point that there are perfectly good, decent Conservatives up and down the country, you know, trolling up and down the streets, knocking on doors, stuffing envelopes, and they have been completely betrayed by people at the top of the party. Well, if, the, if these people, the are, great they, these people are guilty of what they are guilty of, then they've then they've uh, they've let themselves down. They've mm -hmm. let the party down, let the country down. Because I think this what this does, it just doesn't blacken the name of our party. Unfair. There's a lot of good people mm -hmm. who haven't done this, but the whole world of politics gets blackened through this, which is entirely on the vast majority of people that go into politics on either side of the political divide are decent people trying to do the, do the right mm -hmm. thing, and this should not be a case of this blackens the whole world of politics and all those people doing all that work not just the candidates themselves are volunteers of mm. course it demoralizes some people but we should recognize these, these despite the fact there are four cases we think um potential cases that, that that's a very isolated number of people do you think there'll be more though i mean there's lots of talk about more i know there's lots of talk the media talks a lot about mm. these things i honestly don't know andrew and i'd rather not speculate on that we're all human um but the Prime Minister has been through the most extraordinary few weeks, starting with that deluge of rain, and then big mistakes on his part, like leaving D-Day early. Um, and then he's had the, 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 the betting scandal coming against him. In truth, the game is up, isn't it? 
I don't agree with that. I mean, I, I, obviously the media focus, focuses on this and people want answers on this. I completely agree. But when I'm on the doorstep, as I am a lot right now, people are not talking about this generally on the doorstep and they've got a perfect right to do so, of course. But they're talking about the future. They want to know how their tax is going to go up. They want to know how we're going to tackle migration, all those things. Mm -hmm. We've committed that we're going to reduce taxes. We're going to reduce migration. That people have got a choice of that. That's really what people should vote for. Of course, they should vote on whatever basis they see fit. But the most important thing is the future. Who's going to run this country properly? Who's going to control migration? Who's going to keep taxes low? I believe that's more likely to be under Conservative government. What I know is that Conservative candidates, including, by the way, ministers, with what would have been quite decent majorities, 5,000, 10,000, 12,000, are being ordered by central office to stop their campaigns and send their volunteers and their money elsewhere because those seats are already lost. Well, I don't see that at all. I mean, I'm, I was campaigning recently in Darlington, very good MP over there with a relatively small majority, uh, Peter Gibson, I probably shouldn't mention him, I'm sorry about that. Um, but um, but we're campaigning hard in Darlington. I mean, we're campaigning, <coughs> uh, campaigning hard in seats around the country uh, of, of large majorities But if, and if, if you look at where the Prime Minister has been campaigning, that is almost entirely in seats with absolutely enormous majorities, which is not what any leader of a party would be doing if he thought he was heading for victory. Well, I, I've certainly seen him in seats with low majorities. I'm not sure that is the, totally the case, Andrew, but he'll decide to go wherever, wherever mm. he decides to go. But I don't think this game is, is up. I think we have got a real battle on, clearly, to illustrate to people that the only way, if you want to control migration, is, is a vote for mm. Conservative. If you vote for anybody else, whether it be Reform or Labour, you are effectively handing over the keys for number 10 Downing Street to Keir Starmer, who I don't think can be trusted in terms of taxation or migration. You are Rishi Sunak's constituency neighbour and, I think, friend. Um, at a human level, um, how is he coping with this? If it was me, I would be hiding under the table, gnawing my fingernails and moaning by now. Well, that shows the character of the man, I think. He's not doing that, is he? He's out there. I saw him tonight on the debate he's doing this evening. He's full of energy. He's full of optimism. He believes he's the, he can provide the right solutions for this country. He, he Look what he did through the COVID crisis. Look what he did through the cost of living crisis. The economy is growing again for as fast as any other country in the G7. He believes we've got a very optimistic uh, uh, a future ahead in this country, and he mm. believes he's the right person to lead it. One of the things he's done, of course, is um, hold the election now, and I'm not the only person to have noted that the Bank of England is quite likely to cut interest rates after the election, when it may well be another Chancellor of the Exchequer enjoying the benefit of that. Do you not look back at this stage and think that really was another missed opportunity, another bad decision? Honestly, well, come on. Uh, Having this election I, I, I now... I'll be honest with you, Andrew. I mean, I, <laughs> I I th that to be a leader is the toughest job in the world. Nobody knows how tough it is. And it's a massive difference between that person who, make, who calls the shots and the people who, who don't. They stand on the sidelines and criticise, some of which the media does, of course, and opposition, opposition politicians do. What the Prime Minister has to do is make the big calls. He made the big calls. It was a bold move. He's got a clear plan. He <laughs> believes He's he, we can still win this election. I believe it too. Well, I'm, I'm very glad to hear you say you believe it because you guys in politics are a different breed, I have to say. <laughs> Seems to me he's made some big calls and they haven't gone terribly well. But Kevin Hollingrake, thank you very That's much life, indeed. That's that is life, that is politics. Thanks very much for coming in.